Today I got my castle wall designed and built. Hey, this is Josh, and you're watching Scattercraft. This is the second episode of my castle build series. If you haven't watched the first episode in this series where I built this guard tower, I'll put a link on the screen so you can go watch that first. I've been real eager to get back to getting more done on this castle build, and I've had a lot of ideas in my head on how I want this to end up looking. So I have some packing foam left over from a desk I recently built, and I realized that the thickness is about perfect for how thick I wanted my walls. These measure about an inch and a half. I'm always on board with upcycling something that otherwise would have been thrown in the garbage into something useful. So let me show you how I turned what otherwise would have been trash into this. All right, so I had a bunch of scrap pieces of foam that I decided I wanted to use up in this build as well. I started cutting some 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter bricks. Then I cut a whole bunch more. I like the thickness, but it was a little short, so I cut another piece for this foam here and glued it on. Then I just started laying a bunch of the bricks. I sometimes like to texture them beforehand, but I really wanted these to fit together nicely, so I didn't do that, so I'd get nice seams. Laying these was really simple, I just stacked them up until I reached the top. Then I cut a hole in the bottom and added some cheap dollar store rocks to give it some nice weight. Used about three or four sticks of glue to fill that up. Once I did, I pressed that onto some parchment paper to give it a flat bottom. The problem with using hot glue is you get all these wisps. Even with the wisps, I prefer hot glue to tacky glue or PVA glue, because I do not want to wait for the glue to dry when I'm in the middle of a project. I do one more layer of bricks to finish out the top. I felt like one inch the width of a mini base was about right for these battlements. I did about two inches high for the front. About a height I liked on this and glued it on. I glued an extra piece on the bottom to make it nice and square. And added a couple of pieces of scrap for filler to give it strength. I wire brushed on some wood grain to make some boards. Then I cut it real thin. Laying the boards is real fast and real fun. I laid the boards on one by one, letting them hang over the edge. And then just cut them all flush at the end all at once. And it's a beautiful sound. Looking pretty good. And then I covered the bottom too. I cut the arrow slits a little wide. That way I can put some boards in there at the end as well to trim it out. I just went through and covered everything else with boards as well. I 
Letting it all overhang like this is not a problem. In the end, you can just use the X-Acto and true everything up perfectly. Carefully start putting all the trim pieces in the arrow slits. Those turn out looking pretty nice. I just put the top board on to finish that out. And then finally, time to glue it on. It's much easier to do all the fiddly work first and then glue it on at the end. I wanted to give some dimension to the front so I put a few trim pieces on here. And then just like the tower I wanted some big timbers supporting it. I also put on a few big timbers on the back as well. Running a little low on Mod Podge here. We got enough at least for this project. You might have noticed I didn't texture the bricks. And I realized that after I painted the Mod Podge and I had to roll that on by hand afterwards and it was really messy. But here it is all Mod Podge and it's looking awesome. I just painted this out with the same color scheme that I used on the tower. Basing out with a gray. And the wood with burn umber. Then I dry brushed everything with a light mocha. In the end, I dry brushed the bricks with the antique parchment white. After everything dried very well, I did a black wash. If you do the black wash too early, it can mess up your dry brushing. Ask me how I know. I 
And I love putting the black wash on the bricks. It really makes them look real. And now for the final reveal. Okay, so that was a real fun build, and I'm very happy with the results. I'm glad I took the time to think about this project and really get a result that I actually like and it turned out the way I wanted it to look. I'm quite happy with the way the little arrow slits turned out. I'm sure if this was a real castle, they'd have some kind of little arrow slits in the bottom to shoot down. And I really spent a lot of time thinking about how I was going to do that and make it look good. Then I realized this is just a representation for a wall for my Dungeons & Dragons games, and I'm happy with it. 100% realism is not really what I'm going for when I build these kind of things anyways. I also originally wanted to put a top piece on the wooden battlements, but then I realized it wouldn't really be the best thing for minis, and it still looks really great. Lost one of my arrows. The arrows were a last minute thought, but they turned out pretty cool too. They're just a straight piece of paper clip that I clipped off and glued on some paper as fletchings. They were a little fiddly, but I really like the way they ended up, and I think I'll make a lot more of these for future projects. Well, I hope that you were inspired as well to build something yourself. If you were, please share this video with your friends. I am new to YouTube and your shares really help grow this channel more than you know. And I really, really appreciate it. And if you like this video, of course, subscribe and thanks so much for watching Scattercraft. Bye.